Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know I have not recorded or uploaded anything in a couple of weeks, largely because I have not necessarily been motivated or inspired to talk about anything in particular lately, as well as really focusing on the job search and trying to lock down a job amidst a pandemic in New York City, which is very, very challenging considering all of the factors that are in play with unemployment uh, in the city and, and what have you. But nevertheless, here we are. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I hope folks are doing well and staying safe. So today, what I wanted to talk about was body image. And uh, we can dive into lots of different areas of body image and ways to combat it and ways to seek help and ways to seek support. So if you are wanting, willing, and able to listen to what I have got to say today, then thank you for being here and let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, again, Wayne Glass, he, him, his pronouns, and welcome back to Wayne Glass Fitness. So we are gonna talk today about body image. Now, what is body image? Uh, I like to define it as the way we see ourselves in comparison to the way that others see ourselves. And it can be positive, it can be less than positive, and it can be somewhere in between. So a good comparison that I like to think about is like, let's, let's look at ourselves in the mirror. And thinking about, you know, whether we're muscular or more thin, or maybe um, a little fuller or thicker with 87 C's, um, that is uh, in comparison to like what we see versus like what the mirror is displaying back to us. Now, I know I've talked about this for a million and one times over the span of my YouTube channel and life about you know, eating disorders and disordered eating, but today I wanna to specifically focus on body image. Now, we live in a world where a multi-billion dollar companies are feeding off of the image of us and how we perceive ourselves versus how others perceive us, right? So wanting to be thin, wanting to be muscular, wanting to be a size million zero or fit into this and fit into that, right? Like people are making money off of feeling like subscribing and prescribing ways of like how we should be perceived in society. We see it in magazines, we see it on Instagram, we see it on social media, we see it in real life, right? And we internalize that and therefore as a result, it impacts our, our mental health and our way of being and doing in life. And that, which is really problematic, right? And I, you know, I'm all about wanting to advocate for, for self-love and for uh, body positivity and you know what we can do with our bodies as opposed to how we look, right? So let's talk about that. So the first thing I really wanna dive into is functionality. Now, aesthetics are great. It's, you know, we wanna love how we look, um, which is awesome. And also like, what can we do with our bodies? Now, if we look a certain way and we can't like pick things up off the floor or we can't bend over or we can't, you know, move, whether it's via our legs or if we're using a wheelchair or if we're using crutches, then what is like, what is the point of life, right? Being uh, stereotypically beautiful, as they say, um, is not necessarily going to allow us to, to be able to do stuff like, right? So function. Now, Again, not to talk about CrossFit, but to talk about CrossFit is about the like the functionality of it with like moving, you know, needing to be functional in life. So for example, I'm sitting on this bed right now and my body is going to allow me to get up and then like to move from the bedroom to another part of our apartment. Now, if we are not, you know, doing our due diligence and our best to take care of our bodies, then then we can't do those things, right? So, and I recognize there's a lot that goes into it. And again, not to talk about disordered eating or eating disorders, but to talk about it is that if we're not effectively fueling our bodies, then, you know, we're not gonna be able to do those things. And I know that there's so much that goes into being able to combat those ideations and ideologies and, and ways of thinking, but what can, we, what can we do to do that, right? 
So I am a huge proponent of counseling, of therapy, and if we are able to, to seek out a dietitian, I recognize that it can be expensive, it requires insurance, and there's co-pays and uh, lots of things that go into it. Um, but also being mindful of like free or affordable resources that we can utilize online. Now more than ever, are we utilizing items on the internet, right? Because a lot of us are still home, we're working from home, or we're just home in general. In my case, I'm trying to work from home, um, trying to find a job that is going to be work from home. And therefore, there is more and more and more resources that we're able to access on the internet, again, if we have access to the internet. So that's the biggest factor is functionality. Now, second, I've alluded to this before, but let's talk about aesthetics. Now, being beautiful in ways that we define beauty is awesome and great, and we love that. You know, we want, we want to love ourselves and how we look and how we show up in the world. And also, not necessarily feeding into how we think we need to look. And I am very guilty myself of going on Instagram and scrolling through queer fitness models or just fitness people in general. I'm like, wow, I want to look like that. Or I wish I could do that or wish I could be that way. But then I I'm thinking about myself like, no, you have to, you want to love yourself the way you are. And this is me talking to myself. I don't ever want to fall in that pit of despair again to where I was when I was a little bit younger of, you know, restricting my eating or feeling needing to binge eat or feeling the need to, to over exercise to, to combat for those calories that I'm consuming. I don't want to fall into that pit of despair again. Now, thinking about aesthetics and thinking about body image and thinking about eating disorders again or that Ed voice, for me in particular, it doesn't really ever go away. It just become and has become more silent over the years. So let's all do our best to not just necessarily aimlessly scroll through social media, specifically focusing on content where it's fitness models, you know, just displaying their beautiful bodies. And again, I'm guilty of it too, of whether posting content or actually viewing content that feeds into that. And um, again, I, I want us to all be able to love our bodies for, for, for what they are, right? Whether we're tall, short, thin, thicker, muscular, anywhere in between. And, I, and again, I know it's easier said than done. It's very challenging and requires a lot of work. Something that I am going to start doing as a human in relation to kind of combating those challenging ideations is I'm going to really try to focus on making notes of like gratitude and, and kind of even brief online journaling. So I used to be a journaler for many, many years. I would like write things down, even a thought or a feeling and very, uh, I, a very 2000s, very Evanescence, very Blink-182, very emo. That was the brand that I subscribed to. But I since have fallen away from that. I focus more on school and like writing and academic ways and what have you and kind of ignored my journaling. But um, I was meeting and talking with a really good friend of mine on FaceTime about a petty journal and a gratitude journal. And I think that that would be a really fun way to kind of mark out how we're feeling throughout the day uh, and then focus on weeks, you know, whether it's Monday through Friday or Monday to Sunday um, and seeing how, how we feel throughout those days and elements of gratitude and elements of pettiness. And again, I do not attribute th this idea to, to myself. Uh, my friend Albert, you know, came up with the idea. So I, I want to give the, give them all of the credit that because they deserve that. That's exactly who it came from. But thinking about how we can think about that with, with like, you know, our body image and how we feel throughout the day and making note of that and being conscious of it. Third element that I want to talk about today is in relation to body image is like mindful eating or eating, um, like consciously eating or however we want to frame that. And Again, um, trying to have a well incorporated or well balanced nutrition, right? Making sure that we're doing our best to eat our vegetables, to eat our fruits, to have our proteins, whether it's, you know, if you're a meat eater or you're a vegetarian or you're a vegan, being able to incorporate some type of protein into your day to day life. And then if we're wanting to throw in, um, you know, a dessert or a sweet, then, you know, go for it. Live your best life, right? So I'm not saying like, 
eat dessert all the time because then it's not going to necessarily, uh, the sugar is not going to make our body feel the best. But uh, again, giving our body like a healthy balance is I think is really important. On the note of eating, um, I think that's what can be really challenging for folks that might be working on body image um, concerns. You know, I feel like I always am myself is measuring, right? Numbers are such a triggering thing for people who are working through, um, working through those things, you know, uh, a cup of this, an ounce of that, a pound of this, you know, and I think that that can be a lot. It can be really overwhelming. And what happens is that for me, at least, you know, folks might spiral, right? Like I need to measure everything that I've eaten ever. And if I, you know, eat too much, then I have to do this, that, and the other, right? I don't think that is necessarily the most helpful thing. So I know a lot of people have found it to be super helpful when it comes to living their lives. They measure everything, right? They measure their coffee, they measure their protein, they measure their vegetables, they measure everything is measured and weighed, which is if it's helpful for you and you're able to to live your life in a fulfilling way and it's not problematic, then I say go for it. But like for me, the only thing that I measure is how how much oats I put in the bowl to, to make oatmeal with for breakfast. Like that's the only thing I really measure. Everything else is more eyeballed, like a handful or a palmful or, you know, what have you. I'm not gonna, you know, unless I'm baking, I'm, which I don't, I don't bake. I'm not a baker. Um, then I would say I'm, I'm not going to measure the food that I'm eating. You know, I, again, I try to be intuitive, like intuitive eating. I, that's really what I like to do. If I want something, um, then I'm going to have it, but also like being mindful of thinking about, you know, wanting to, to always try to incorporate my vegetables, my proteins, my carbohydrates and, um, my fruits and, and what have you. And if I want to have ice cream or if I want to have cake, uh, during that particular day, then, um, then I might have it and, or I might not, I might like, nah, I don't want to go spend money on it or I don't want to make it. Then I just might not have it. So Again, we want to be mindful. We want to be intuitive about how we're thinking about those things. So, you know, again, to, to retract, to, to backtrack. So we talked about, you know, body image. We talked about how we see ourselves versus how others see ourselves. We talked about mindful eating and, you know, mental health and how that is all interwoven within those elements. Again, it's not, it may not necessarily be an, an exact science in regarding to, to these particular items. It takes a lot of uh, self-work and again, being able to seek out those support resources that I alluded to before, even if we're just talking to family or friends or a partner or community members about what we're going through, I think it'd be really helpful and really liberating to be able to talk about that. And again, it's not, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Our bodies are not necessarily going to be going to be rebuilt in a day. And our frame of thinking is not going to be, uh, I guess, changed in a day. It, we have to be kind and we have to give ourselves grace and be patient with ourselves. And I, I am the most impatient human on the planet. If I want something, I want it now. So, and I'm, I'm saying this out loud. So that way I also too can be working on these items. And again, it's challenging. I can also serve as a resource. If you ever want to process or talk to me, um, or reach out about questions, comments, concerns, outrage, as my friend and colleague Amanda Ray always says, then please, please do it. I'm more than willing to serve as a resource and to, to allow folks to, to flip a figurative table. Thank you all so much for, for always, uh, for listening, for, for tuning in and to, to hearing what I have to say. Uh, again, I'm always trying to learn, grow, be better and do better especially for those that I'm working with and serving, right? Like I truly believe that I was put on this earth to, to help others and also help others help themselves. And also I would love to be helped as well, right? So being open to, to both ends of the spectrum. All right, well, I hope you all have an amazing day, week ahead. Um, thank you again for being here. Please sure to um, subscribe to my channel, like the content, provide feedback. I'm always here for it. And I love you all and appreciate you for, for listening. And I look forward to connecting more soon.